Hello, hello. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is the first session on zero knowledge. And the first paper in this session is Online Offline Oral Composition of Sigma Protocols by Michele Ciampi, Pino Persiano, Alessandra Scafuro, Luisa Sincalchi, and Ivan Visconti. And uh, Michele will give the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, okay. Um, uh, proof of knowledge. Um, proof of knowledge is a, a fundamental crypto tool um, with many applications, and in particular in cryptography is uh, useful when uh, um, there is a witness that needs to be protected uh, when uh, WI is needed is an example of that. Um, um, that is, uh, we have a prover that wants to prove the knowledge of a secret X uh, or a secret Y uh, or a secret Z. Um, to implement a uh, proof of knowledge, we can uh, use basically two approaches. Uh, that is a theoretical approach and a more practical and efficient approach. Uh, from the theoretical side, we, uh, we know that proof of knowledge exists for graph Hamiltonicity. Uh, this means that we construct uh, um, proof of knowledge for all languages in NP. Um, from the practical side, we uh, can use a, a sigma protocol um, for an NP relation R. Here we have an example of, uh, of the Schnorr protocol um, uh, that is uh, really efficient. Uh, actually, um, the prover uh, uh, only needs one modular exponentiation to, to complete the execution, while in the other side, in the theoretical side, we, we need to, uh, to compute an um, NP reduction that is really expensive. Um, an observation that, we, um, that will be useful thereafter in this presentation is that um, um, when the proof of knowledge is uh, um, implemented uh, uh, by using uh, LS90, Lapidot-Shamir-90, uh, and uh, mm, also in the Schnorr protocol, uh, to compute uh, the first round, uh, both theorem and witness are not needed by, by the prover. Okay, but what is it, a sigma protocol for a relation R? Uh, is a three-round public coin uh, that uh, protocol that enjoys completeness. That is, uh, if the prover and verifier follow the protocol, then verifier always accepts. Uh, special honest verifier zero knowledge. That is, there exists uh, an efficient simulator that takes as input uh, the theorem X and the challenge C, and outputs um, a transcript that is dis identically distributed to the real transcript. And special soundness, that is, uh, uh, there exists uh, an uh, efficient algorithm that takes as input to two accepting transcripts uh, with respect to the same theorem X uh, that share the first uh, uh, round and outputs a witness for, for the theorem X. Um, in this pre presentation, we are interested um, in a prover that uh, takes as input to theorem and want to, want to prove the knowledge of, um, of a witness, such that uh, this witness uh, and uh, one out of two of these uh, theorem, uh, theorems belongs to uh, a relation R0 or uh, the relation R1. Uh, also, in this case, we can, uh, we can uh, see uh, the theoretical and the practical approach. Uh, the theoretical approach is the same um, as before. The only thing that changes uh, is the theorem uh, involved in the NP reduction. Um, uh, from a uh, uh, practical side, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we need to assume that, uh, they, that there exist uh, sigma protocol, sigma zero and sigma one for the relations uh, R zero and R one, and use uh, the construction proposed uh, in 94 by uh, Kramer, Damgard, and Schoonmakers. Uh, that takes as input uh, to two sigma protocols and output um, three round WI um, proof of knowledge. Uh, at this point, one can ask why we don't use always the practical, the, uh, the efficient approach. The reason is that there is a gap. Uh, if we 
implement the proof of knowledge by using LS90, as I said before. Um, we have that uh, the prover does not need uh, uh, the theorem to compute the first round, but unfortunately this property is not uh, uh, enjoyed by uh, CDS. Okay, let me more uh, 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 specific, um, let me more precise about the gap between CDS and LS on the left. LS enjoys uh, delayed input completeness. Uh, what is it? Um, uh, that is that prover and verifier can compute uh, the first two round interaction of the protocol without any additional input, without theorem and witness uh, as input, witness all only for the prover, clearly. Uh, and only to compute the third round, the prover needs, um, the, needs the witness, clearly. Um, adaptive input to proof of knowledge is enjoyed by uh, LS, uh, by LS uh, standard proof of knowledge by uh, CDS. Um, protocol is adaptive input to proof of knowledge if there exists uh, um, such a simulator. We have uh, an uh, that interacts with uh, malicious prover that can adaptively ch uh, choose the theorem to be proved uh, in the last round. Okay, at this point the extractor rewinds the malicious prover and uh, uh, gets another transcript that could be uh, accepting with respect to another, another theorem X prime. And also in this, um, in this scenario, uh, can, uh, the extractor can output the witness uh, for, for X. Adaptive input uh, witness indistinguishability is enjoyed by LS, uh, standard uh, WI by um, CDS. A protocol is adaptive input WI if the probability that a malicious adversary uh, wins in this game is uh, less than one half plus negligible. What is the game? We have uh, uh, the first two, round in two rounds interaction between prover and verifier uh, and at this point, after the second round um, has been sent by uh, the malicious verifier, uh, the theorem and the witness uh, are adaptively chosen. And at this point, uh, the prover uh, tosses a coin and uh, uses uh, uh, the witness uh, WB to compute uh, the, um, the third round Z. Uh, the malicious um, verifier wins uh, um, if guesses uh, the the bit uh, used in, the, in this um, computation. Uh, in LS, uh, one-way permutation is uh, needed. Uh, no, assumption, uh, no assumptions are required for CDS. Also with LS, um, we obtain only computational WI. With CDS, we get perfect WI. Uh, LS is for all NAP, as I said, and but uh, CD, CDS works only uh, taking as input uh, sigma protocols. Uh, why is this gap uh, so important? The reason is that um, a protocol that uses uh, uh, CDS um, instead of LS um, may have worse round complexity, even if it's, it's more efficient. Uh, here we have some example of, uh, of paper that have this, this issue. And uh, also the delete input completes completeness is, um, is why widely used in uh, recent works. Uh, what are our results? Um, our first result is a, is a compiler that takes as input a proof of knowledge and outputs an adaptive input proof of knowledge. Um, um, uh, why is this so important? Because Sigma protocol in general, um, Sigma protocols in general are not adaptive input proof of knowledge. Uh, for example, it is to see that um, in the Schnorr protocol, um, if the prover can choose uh, um, adaptively the theorem X to be proved, uh, then, the, then the, the proof of knowledge property is lost. Uh, this, uh, um, this, uh, um, this issue was observed in a work of Bernard Pereira Varinsky uh, um, uh, about the weak FS, FS transform, but in that context, uh, uh, they solved this problem uh, in the random oracle model. But what can we do in the standard model? Uh, the idea is uh, to have the, um, here I continue 
the, my example by using uh, the Schnorr protocol. The idea is to have the Schnorr protocol, the black one, and uh, to run uh, in parallel uh, another protocol, the purple one, uh, that uh, um, is uh, necessary to prove uh, the knowledge of the randomness used by the prover to compute the first round. Uh, this means that we have uh, a fixed theorem, and then the extractor can extract this value, r, and actually can extract the witness y used in the Schnorr protocol, the black protocol. Um, this, tra um, this transform uh, uh, applies to a large class of sigma protocol, uh, protocols discussed in uh, this work that um, are the most used uh, Sigma protocols, actually. Okay, uh, now we can uh, talk about our second result, uh, that is about re bridging the gap uh, in the, the um, WI property and the completeness property. Uh, okay, um, here we, ha we have a comparison between LSCDS and uh, um, our previous work accepted at TCC that uh, that uh, is in the middle between LS and CDS. Uh, this work uh, is, um, with this work, we actually bridge this gap by obtaining a delay debut completeness. Um, we have proof of knowledge that can be turned on adaptive input proof of knowledge by using the um, construction that I said before. We obtain ad adaptive input WI, like uh, LS. Uh, unfortunately, we did uh, an additional assumption, the decisional Diffelman assumption, uh, that is standard anyway. Uh, works with multiple or composition, and uh, no NP reduction is needed, but uh, as a drawback, we obtain computational WI, uh, computational WI like LS. Uh, and uh, our construction is restricted to, to uh, the same class of sigma protocol that I, that I briefly described before. Uh, summary, um, uh, in our work, the, the only real drawback is the, the assumption, that is the decisional Diffie-Hellman, and uh, also we made a comparison of efficiency um, between all of these works. Uh, in, in a context where uh, the computation can be seen um, in div divided in two phases, an, off an offline phase where, uh, um, where all the computation uh, can be done without using theorem and witness, and the online phase where uh, the, the theorem and witness become available. Uh, become available. Um, and uh, uh, in our, our result uh, is uh, uh, have an online phase that is uh, uh, as efficient as CDS 94. How about our construction? As a main tool, uh, uh, we use uh, um, uh, KN Traptor commitment. Um, that is, uh, we have uh, a sender that computes N uh, commitment. And we have a protocol pi uh, that proves that at least k out of n of this commitment are perfectly binding. Also, for, mm, for the rest of uh, the commitment, we can uh, equivocate to any value that uh, we want by the opening procedure by um, specifying which message we want to open with respect to the commitments that are not perfectly binding. As a second uh, um, component, we use a uh, delayed input sigma protocol and uh, the honest, special honest verifiers in knowledge associated. Um, okay, um, how our construction works. Um, for simplicity, I, I show only a construction uh, with uh, n equals uh, 2 and k equals 1. Uh, here we have uh, a prover that runs uh, the, um, the honest procedure to compute uh, two first round with respect to the protocol sigma. Um, I recall that, that this can be done without uh, any theorem as input. And uh, then um, um, 
a commitment, a KN chapter commitment is, uh, is computed. Um, the idea is that we can equivocate one out of two A1 or uh, A2. And uh, once that we have a witness WB, we can actually complete uh, an, a transcript with respect to XB uh, by running the honest procedure of the sigma protocol, of the input um, sigma protocol. And for the theorem for which no witness has been provided, we run the honest verifier xenology simulator obtaining an A star, and at this point, as I said, we can open one out of two of the value on the first round, A1, A2, to another value, that is A star. So we have A1 and A star, and at this point, the verifier uh, checks that always is correct. Okay, but how can we construct um, an efficient KN tractor uh, commitment? As a first ingredient, we use decisional, the decisional Diffelman assumption. I will refer to this such of tuple as DH tuple and uh, to this type of tuple as known DH tuple. We also, as a second ingredi ingredient, ingredient, we use an instance dependent tractor commitment that is a commitment where uh, if the tuple used to compute the commitment is a, a no, and, uh, non DH, we obtain a, a perfect binding and computationally hiding commitment. And uh, if uh, the tuple T is uh, DH, we obtain, we obtain a um, computationally binding and uh, an equivocal commitment. Okay, so how uh, we mix uh, these ingredients together? Um, we have a sender that uh, needs to compute n commitment. Uh, as a first thing, he selects uh, uh, n tuple, run the instance dependent tractor commitment by using as input uh, h tuple uh, once uh, and commitment to a message uh, mi. And this is how these commitments are constructed. And then uh, um, the prover needs to uh, compute this, uh, um, uh, this protocol pi. Uh, with this protocol pi, we, uh, the prover, pr the sender, proves that at least k out of n of this uh, t1, tn uh, tuple are non dh. OK, how uh, can we construct this? Um, as before, I made an example with uh, k equals 1 and then equals 2. Uh, so we have two, only two tuples that are non-dh. Uh, the first thing that the prover does is uh, uh, modify the third element of each tuple to obtain t1 prime, that is dh, and t two prime that is uh, still non, uh, non DH. And at this point, the prover runs CDS94 to prove that T1 prime is DH or T2 prime is DH. And uh, um, this protocol ends with, this, with uh, this observation that is, uh, we accept um, if and only if one out of two of the starting tuples uh, is uh, a non, uh, non DH. Okay. Um, as I as I said, uh, um, my first uh, um, um, my previous um, uh, the previous construction that I showed to you uh, um, was only an, uh, an example actually and works with uh, any K and any N. In uh, our paper, we also have a construction that work uh, for different and for different NP relation. Um, uh, in uh, our the previous construction works only with uh, uh, taking as input a sigma pro a one sigma protocol for a relation R. Um, and also, we give uh, a compiler that uh, transform um, a sigma protocol 
uh, belong to, belonging to um, to this class, uh, um, and uh, and we can transform it in an adaptive input uh, um, proof of knowledge. Uh, as open problem, uh, we leave uh, we leave uh, the possibility to extend uh, um, uh, our our compiler. That is, uh, uh, can we extend the class of Sigma protocol that um, that our compiler can take as input to, to transform an um, proof of knowledge into an adaptive input uh, uh, proof of knowledge? Uh, okay, and uh, that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Michele. Are there any questions? If you go back to the uh, slide where you did the the construction based, yes, this one. So what was the? So you say that you proved that that the modified things. You proved something about the modified things. Okay. Right. So so but there doesn't seem to be a connection to the original T1 and T2. So why 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 do you conclude anything about okay, the things you from? Okay, we are. Okay, T1 uh, are um, both no no non di fielma. Uh, and then uh, we have that if we change uh, the third element of this uh, um, stubble and then prove uh, that uh, at least one is, uh, is the age of this, uh, of, uh, this stubble, then for sure, if we change the last element, uh, the stubble one out of two of T1 uh, or T2 for sure is uh, non the age actually. Any more questions? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again. Okay.